Hey guys, I think I have another very interesting story, a video that I'm gonna make. I once sat on a Senate committee. I was subpoenaed to a Senate committee. This was after I cooperated about boxing. So I'm gonna tell you the story. It's a little confusing, but I'm gonna tell you the story. It was during the time when Mike Tyson was getting in the ring and he was killing everybody he got in the ring with. Don King was promoting these fights and putting up big, big, serious money in the millions all the time. So they would pick out opponents for him to fight and they would pay them. One of the people they went to is Ronaldo Snipes, heavyweight, good guy. I knew him personally. I went to a gym, I knew him very well. I knew his manager, Sal Pascal, and uh, he had told me they offered 250 or 300,000 to Snipes to fight. Snipes was a good fighter. He had mostly all wins. He had some heavyweight wins. I mean, he was, he was good. But that wasn't enough money. The problem was he wasn't current. He didn't have any fights recently. So we had a job of building him up that we can maybe make more money. There was a guy in Italy, it was the Italian champ. His name was Francesco Damiani. Damiani had the Italian belt. He was a heavyweight. So I thought, reaching out to them, his manager, Umberto Brangini, was a made guy in Italy, and he had this fighter. I was talking with John Gotti about this whole situation. He was encouraging me to see if I could get it done. I got Johnny Gambino, was with the Zips, with us. He was the captain. He knew these people on the other side. Well, he didn't know them personally, but he knew people who knew them, especially that the guy was a friend of ours. So we reached him. And we told him we would set up a fight in the United States. We would set up a fight with Mike Tyson for a big payday. They were immediately interested. The deal was that he would have to come into the United States and fight a contender first. So he's got, she's a champ, he's got a belt, he fights a contender, he beats this guy a contender, and now he's going to fight Mike Tyson. Big money fight. Italian champion, Mike Tyson, he just beat a contender, big money fight. Everything is going beautiful. He was going to come in, he was going to fight this Ray Mercer, beat him easily, come in now and fight Ronaldo Snipes, our guy, we would fix the fight, and he would lose. Snipes now has the Italian belt, a guy who beat a contender, and Snipes is in perfect position to make big money. The 250, 300,000 that they were offering him, that number would go a million plus, easily. We make a deal with Snipes and his partner, Sal. We would give Snipes 500,000. Sal would get 100, 150,000. We would get the balance 350 or 400, and we would get the rest. John Gotti was on cloud nine. Joe Watts even 
we tapped him. He knew somebody who can help with the ratings and push this whole thing. The guy was in Vegas. So I got my guys, Mario and Joe Polito. They owned Gem Atlas Steel. They were with me. They got their wives. I went with my wife. It's a bullshit vacation. But it, what it really was about is I was going to meet this guy who was going to set up some heavyweight stuff to promote it and get it higher. The higher we get it, the more money we make, the more the cut up is going to be. Everybody's tickle pink. I go to Vegas and we do that. I have commitments all over the place. We're ready to go. Everything is nailed down. The Italian fighter comes in and he's going to beat up this Ray Mercer. He's a contender, but it's an easy win for our side. We don't even have to talk with Ray Mercer. We don't have to include him. He's going to get beat up, no doubt in our minds. The fight is set. It goes. Ray Mercer wins the fight. The Italian fighter loses his belt to Ray Mercer. We have no tie to him. We're dead. Ray Mercer, eventually, I think he's going to go fight Tyson. Our guy is out. When I cooperated, I told the government this story. A Senate hearing was going on, and they subpoenaed me to go to the Senate hearing and tell the story. And I do. The problem is the government already knew a lot more, not only did I knew, but what they knew. They knew a lot of this stuff was going on. That's why they're subpoenaing me to the Senate committee. So what they did is everything I told them, everything I'm telling you, they added their own facts into that. And this isn't just a story. They had facts to this stuff of other people who were involved. I guess they had other people cooperating or they knew this whole plot was going down the whole time. And I'm sitting in front of a Senate committee and I'm reading this story with my facts and their facts mixed together. I never do that. I never read anything. All these videos, my podcast, I'm not, I can't read. When you see the video, you can see I'm, I'm stiff. I don't, I'm not a good reader. So I never do that. But I'm going to hook this video up of the Senate committee. So you could listen to my video and go right into the Senate committee and you could hear the video. A lot of those facts are added in. I'm reading them, but they're written in by the government who had evidence of all of this. It was weird because I thought back and I said years ago when this thing actually happened, before I cooperated, way before, if this fight would have worked, <laughs> me and John would have been super happy behind bars because <laughs> they knew the whole thing. They were just waiting for it to happen. I don't know if they were as disappointed as we were, <laughs> but I think everybody was disappointed. One more thing about Snipes. I knew him. I used to go to the gym and box. One day he tells me, he says, hey, Sammy, do me a favor. Now, he's six, two, three. I mean, he's a big dude. I mean, powerful, long fucking arms. I mean, he said, do a few rounds with me. He's a heavyweight. I said, bro, I'm not going to get in the ring with you. Why would I do that? You're so much, you'll kill me in two minutes. He's a professional fighter. He fought for championship fights. 
He's not a you know, rank amateur or something like I am. So he started laughing. He says, I'm not going to throw nothing. I'm not going to throw a lot of punches. I want you because I'm fighting somebody who's very short. So I want to fight you so you can come in. You could throw body shots at me. I want to cover, and, and I'm going to hit you, but not, not hard. I give you my word, bro. I'm not, are you, you're my friend. I said, all right, I'll do it. I got in the ring with him, and the bell went off, and we started sparring. And I went in like he probably wanted me to do, and I started hitting body shots, hard body shots. And he would block, throw a punch or two or three. He was so much taller than me that when I leaned under and I hit him body shots, he leaned over me. And I got up quick, not meaning it. My head hit him in the face, and his nose started bleeding quite a bit. So the bell rang. So I start walking to my corner. As I'm walking to my corner, I'm looking at him. Blood running down his face. He's smiling at me. I see those white mouthpiece. I think he's rowling at me. I'm not sure what he's doing. So I go to the corner, I get to the ropes, I pick up the rope, put a foot out, and I'm going. Where are you going? It's round two. Fuck no. I don't know if he's mad, you know what I mean? So I'm not getting into this round two. So I walked out and I left. And he, was, he thought that was the funniest thing in the world. He would tease me about it all the time. He really was a gentle giant, great guy. I think he's still alive, I hope he's still alive. But um, I thought this was a story that you would enjoy. If you don't, go and fuck yourself. No, no. <laughs> so if you like it, press like, subscribe all the time. Adios, motherfucker.